Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'll try. I'll try to be. I'll try to be short. Um, I hope I'll be short, but um, um, I must uh, repeat some issues that has already been said. Uh, I think it will do no harm. Um, the Netze uh, fixed idea of cleansing the national body from anything regarded as alien and unwanted led to segregation and physical annihilation. Especially two groups became victims of the Nazi genocide, the mentally ill and the Jews. However incomparable both groups might seem at first glance, they have two basic features in common. The motive, that is the Nazi racial, uh, racial hygiene frenzy, and the forms of extermination. Uh, there were two ways to the final aim of the Nazi policy, either direct or indirect killing. Mass casting prevail, prevailed within the first method. Less analyzed, however, has been the indirect approach, which was more deceitful and more complicated. Hunger, infections, exhaustion, and decompensation of chronic diseases could pass for a mere consequence of the general war shortage, and all the dead might be considered hypocritically as victims of circumstances. This attitude had been sufficiently proved in the case of the mentally ill. The Czech psychiatric network shrank from uh, 12 to mere five major, uh, major institutions in Bohemia and Moravia, during the, the occupation. In 1940, the psychiatric uh, hospital in Kosmanos was exempt from the network and established a specific concentration center for German patients from Bohemia. In exchange, Czech patients were evacuated to other Czech institutions. In all, 1,457 patients were transferred in both directions. <coughs> The psychiatric asylum in Brin, Brno, served the same purpose in Moravia, only at normal running of the institution. The concentration in Kosmanos was the first step to the liquidation of German patients in gas chambers. They only escaped by two weeks after Hitler had suspended the action T4. The planned destination for those patient, patients had probably been Birna Sonnenstein, one of the six killing centers. How did they operate? Just like a modern factory with an assembly line. Registration, undressing, a formal one glance medical examination, um, just in order to ease the victims. Marking from brains of scientific interest, guessing in showers, extracting gold teeth and or the chosen brains, cremation and disposing of the ashes. The average performance of Pirna amounted to 980 murders a month. The main limiting factor was the burning speed. An old problem of any murderer from time immemorial, how to get rid of the corpse. Oh, we can see the identical pattern used shortly afterwards in the action Reinhardt in the East. So the prevailing method of the Holocaust originated in the Nazi psychiatry as to the organization as well as to the technique. Many of the T4 personnel helped establish the facilities and provided tutorship to beginners. Some ardent Nazi doctors, heavily disappointed by Hitler's stop of the T4, started killing the patients without any direct central authorization. Others refused to kill intentionally, but they accepted the dying as inevitable. It seems there was a psychological difference between a clear single act of murder and a systematic long-term activity leading to deaths on an impersonal, only statistical basis. 
<coughs> Many of, of the mentally ill died of hunger and related diseases. Even the allies and war crime, war crime uh, in investigators accepted this collateral feature. In fact, the decentralized euthanasia seems to have been partly a result of the direct intent, partly a real effect of circumstances under the pressure of war shortage. The local variability was great. No intentional killing was proved in the protectory asylums. Hunger-related diseases with tuberculosis in the first place were the predominant cause of death. This is the mental hospital uh, I'm working in. And the data are mostly based on this example, which was rather unique in the protectorate because it was the, uh, the collection center for, for T4. Low hygiene, crowding, cold, and <coughs> distress were important precipitating factors. Particularly in Cosmanos, the situation worsened even more after emergency transports from the air or endangered areas uh, of the right had arrived within the action brand. Those patients showed the highest mortality over 80-85%. Jewish psychiatric patients shared the fate of their non-Jewish uh, Jewish fellow patients in the <coughs> right during the early phase of the T4. But shortly afterwards, they were exempt and concentrated partly in Jewish institutions, but mostly in several selected public asylums. Transport <coughs> to death followed. At first, some mentally ill Jews in, from the protectorate left with others for Wismannstadt. Then, analogically to the proceeding in the Reich, uh, two places of concentration were appointed and segregated Jewish departments were established there. Uh, one in the large public institution in Prague Bochnitz for the land of Bohemia and in Kremsir for the land of Moravia. The Jewish patients of Moravia were the first to stream in Theresienstadt from March 1942, Bohemian patients began to follow from July 1942. Out of 322 known psychiatric patients, known to, uh, known to us, 150 arrived in Theresienstadt via Prague, Bochnitz, and 97 via, via Kremsir, and 75 patients of small private asylums <coughs> went directly to Theresienstadt. This is our institution around 1940. We are able to count 10 or 11 such patients in Kosmanos, unfortunately mostly not by name. Five of them went to Prague Bochnitz. One patient had to remain in Kosmanos because of being a typhoid carrier and another patient left for Theresienstadt directly by the transport CM from a neighboring city. One feeble-minded patient died in Kosmanos without being transported. Why did the Nazis make any difference between Jewish and non-Jewish patients? The non-Jewish patients were evaluated and selected for death on the basis of a protocol according to quasi-medico-social criteria. Uh, practical need struggled with the eugenic lunacy for dominance in these <coughs> proceedings, the economic reason being the winner in the end. So that many patients had a chance for survival due to their preserved ability to work. There were, however, only two simple and non-medical criteria in Jewish patients, the fact of being a Jew and the fact of being mentally ill. No complicated procedure was needed 
as to the particular disease, its, its form, a clinical course, length of the hospitalization, or sufficient ability to work. The predestination was self-evident because euthanasia was considered a positive action, a treatment of the national body, and it was regarded as a privilege of the Nordic race to be cured and bred like that. It could never be designed for the Jews as they deserved from the Nazi point of view, no eugenic improvement, no breeding at all. There was even a psychiatric department in Theresienstadt established in cavalry barracks on April 12, 1942, and led by Dr. Arthur Schoenfeld. Uh, he was from Brin, but no. Mostly without beds, the patients lay on bare ground, incredibly compressed, dirty, stinking, hungry, full of lies, sick and dying. The problem was dealt with by a special transport of 235 patients uh, to death together with their medical personnel in August 1942, as reported by Dr. Erich Springer, head of the surgical department in Theresienstadt, whom I happened to know personally and worked in the same hospital of course, much later. Another purely psychiatric transport, DX, have four, uh, 45 patients went to Auschwitz on March the 20th, 1944. The first mention of Theresienstadt as a definitive place chosen for a ghetto can be found in the minutes from the meeting called by Heydrich uh, in Prague on October the 10th, uh, 1941. From it, it is clear how the Nazis imagined the future of the, of the internees. They openly counted on epidemics and other sorts of natural deaths, regardless of the risks. Theresienstadt was the most Western Nazi ghetto in full sense. Its rationale was not a mere preparation for transports, but it was also planned for a long-term stay of the elderly. Theresienstadt appears incomparable to the ghettos in the East as to brutality, since the protectorate was located at the very edge of the world, where at least some limits existed, a political including the international opinion, legal and generally cultural. As a rule, Nazi criminal operations were more covered in Western and Middle Europe than in the immense and and Morpheus East, where no remnants of governmental structures or local administrative or communication channels, however, reduced. Theresienstadt appears to have been a halfway institution of its own kind. One hundred and fifty-four thousand two hundred persons were transported to Theresienstadt, and thirty-four thousand two hundred and sixty-six of them died there. So the overall mortality amounted to 22.2%. To compare, the annual mortality rate in general population of Europe was 3%. So we could expect 4,626 deaths in Theresienstadt, while the grim reality was more than seven times as, as much. On the other hand, 6,268 patients were T uh, treated in Kosmanos from April 1939 up to April 1945, of whom 200 and 504 died, um, which means a mortality of 40 percent. Incoming Jews living in the protectorate represented mostly an average specimen of the general population as to their health and age. In the Reich, young and middle-aged men were mostly sent directly to the East, while the, uh, the while the elderly, with preponderance of women, arrived in Theresienstadt. Despite of this fact, the elderly did not accumulate. On the contrary, their share in the population uh, was steadily decreasing as a result of their much higher mortality. The smaller second peak was due not to the transports in, but to the transports out when mostly healthy young and middle-aged men left in October, mm, October 1944. 
the gender ratio was out of balance all, all along. Women, and mostly elderly women, prevailed. 92% of deaths occurred in people over 60. TB was the main killer in the psychiatric institutions in Cosmanos as well as in the other asylums. The situation in Theresienstadt was more complex. The main cause of death in the second half of 1942 and the first three months of 1943 was infectious diarrhea. The victims, of which were mostly the elderly, while <coughs> senile weakness and pneumonia completed the leading fatal trial. TB was gradually increasing and finally reached the first place beginning June 1944. The latency of the peak can be easily understood as it, as it is primarily a chronic illness and usually needs time to fully develop. The same was true of Litzmannstadt, so it seems to have been a general rule. We can summarize that Cosmos was overcrowded in 1943 43 and 44, while the peak in August, uh, with the peak in August 43, in the ghetto, the peak came in September 1942 and subsided after October 1944. The overall mortality rate was much higher in Cosmanos compared with the ghetto. The mortality of TB was approximately similar in both places. The gender ratio was near to normal in Cosmanos while strongly shifted in Theresienstadt. The main similarity is the forced stay in disastrous conditions leading to starvation and resulting infections, TB being the leading one in psychiatric institutions and growingly important issue in Theresienstadt as well as, for example, Lismannstadt. Another similarity consists in the paranoid Nazi ideology striving for the disposal of the unwanted considered to be dangerous to the German race. The essential difference is the intent that in psychiatric patients after T4 were not always explicitly intentional, but appeared as a convenient byproduct of the war shortage and general conditions. It depended on persons involved in the decision making on the spot. On the other hand, dying in Theresienstadt was deliberately conceived to decimate the Jewish people from the very beginning. The decision to send a person to Theresienstadt itself can be considered as a murder attempt. And uh, in, in the end, you can see the section room in Kosmanos. Uh, most, of the, most of the patients in the section room looked like that, was emaciated to that extent. Uh, you can see Professor Franz Lubsch, emeritus from Prague, the pathologist, and this <coughs> young lady, now aged uh, 93, gave us this, this picture and her testimony. So, thanks for your attention. <laughs>